hello welcome to Kema freak in this video i'll be showing you how to make this gorgeous dress with high slit drape and it's a tube dress actually with inbuilt structure in case you're new here my name is Kemi Omorube. on this channel i discuss sewing tutorials fashion business and a little bit of vlogs sometimes please do well to subscribe to this channel let's get to work I'll be working with the following measurement, a bust circumference of 33 inches, under bust circumference of 27.5 inches, the waist circumference of 26 inches, bust span of 7 inches, shoulder width of 14 inches, while for the vertical measurement from the top of the pattern to the bust line, is 9.5 inches to under the bust is 13 inches and the front half length of 17 inches while for the back measurement the back half length is 15.5 inches every other measurement remains the same with the front so i'll be starting this off by working on the front pattern so once again this is just the top of the pattern please refer to my full video on how to draft a basic bodies block to know how to make this the shoulder width is here and this is the chest line from here here and then the bust line i measured from here down here then the under bust line this is the under bust line and this is the waist line so I'll just be labeling this accordingly. This is our chest line, the bust line, the under bust line, and the waist line. Okay, so I've also included the position of my dart, which is the bust span between one input to the other. But because I'm dealing with half of the pattern, so I'm using half of the bust span. And for this individual, I measured 3.5 inches okay now for the horizontal measurement i took out the bust circumference divided by four here and for at the waist i also took out the waist circumference divided by four which gave me 6.5 okay so now i'll be tightening this dart point by two inches i'll be creating a two inches wide dart so because of that i now added the additional two inches here so let's do that together i'm marking one inch to the side of the dart also come this way mark one inch i'll draw a straight line to connect these two okay now this is the bust point but at the same time i don't just want my dad to get to the bust point so i'll come down a little bit by one inch 0.75 inches is usually okay so i'll position my curve this way and curve this to the left the same curve to the right okay now the outfit you are making is a tube dress and you have to decide on how low you want your tube to go for this person i'll be making use of 6.5 inches Okay, so this will be the top of this tube dress and it has a sweetheart neckline. But before I mark out the sweetheart neckline, I'll come to the shoulder width, measure that shoulder width and divide it by two here. Yeah. So I'll connect a line from the shoulder to the bust point this way. Okay, so now I'm going to determine the depth of the neckline along the center front. Okay, this is the center front. So it just depends on how much openness you want right here. But before I do that, I want to tighten this. And I really want this to be very tight because it's a tube top, right? So I'm also marking one inch to both sides and I'll connect this I will connect it one inch above the bust point. So you can make it one inch or 0 0.75. Sincerely, I'm not yet setting what I want to use if I should go for an inch or 0 0.75. We're going all the way to one inch. 
and I won't really use a straight line. I'll just mark. I feel like I can still change my mind about this, but let's start with this anyway. I'm going all the way to one inch simply because it's a two top, and you you don't want you don't want any gaping around here. You want it to be really tight at the top. Okay, so from here onward, I can then create my sweetheart neckline. Okay, maybe I should just go for a straight line here. So I will now mark, create my sweetheart neckline like this. So um, I'm making mine, so I'll be going deep along the center front by two inches. So the depth here, two inches and I'll just blend it into the tip. Okay, so on this other side of things, I need to blend my, the top of my cup into the armhole, okay? Like this. So I just made a marking with my free hand so I can then use my curve to properly define it so here we have it perfect so don't forget that in addition to your actual measurement here you have to replace what you're taking out for the dots okay so this is where my actual major <clears throat> this is where my actual measurement stopped and i added extra two inches and that's why we have this so you all know that if you're using this pattern you have to input your bust dot which is basically this dot at the side and for this person i'm making use of 1.5 that's the difference between the front and the back half length. So I'll connect that to the bust. Yeah? So let's cut this pattern. So I'll split here open so that I can close up my dart right there. I'll split it up until the bust point. Then I'll close up my dart so that I can blend this line properly. So we have this. Next thing I'll be doing now is to cut out the darts. All of these are darts, which will be cut out these will be cut out and we don't need this upper part That's it for the front pattern. I'll set this aside so we can work on the back just a tiny little bit. So here's the back piece. I have the basic back pattern here. 
I used a back half length of 15 inches. I've inputted my measurement from this line. So the major difference between the back and the front is that there will be a zip allowance here, right? So I'll be tightening this zip allowance by half an inch. This is to eliminate the zip bulge that you usually see at the back of some dresses. So right here, I'm replacing it by half an inch so that we don't have a shortage. I'm picking up this side piece just to show you something. This is the side piece for the front pattern. So we have this right here. So you can see that this tube has to start from here, right? And we can't really lift it up this way. So I'll just extend the chest line for the back this way. And I won't really advise you make it straight. Okay, so come downward by half an inch and from here you create your curve or your straight line depending on what you want let's make this a straight line so from here i'm slanting this backward like so so also because it's a tube top i'm going to mark the position of the dart and you may want to set there's various ways you can achieve this same thing actually so but then i will advise you create this usually your back piece will usually have a one inch wide dart right so we're going to tighten this top a little bit as well so by quarter of an inch on both sides of the dart line so if you don't want um if you don't want to separate your pieces you may not want to do this or you can glue it back but you just create like a tightness along the back. What I mean is you can glue back your paper that's hold in the dart this way, tape it and you cut exactly this for the back piece. But I may be inserting plastic or rigidly boning into this so I really need mine to be separated like this. Don't forget to label your pattern. This is the zip allowance, okay? And this is the direction of this just so we don't turn it upside down. And this is um, the center back panel and we have the side back panel. I'll proceed now to cut out this pattern. Okay, so we're done with the top part of these, these two for the front and these two for the back. Now I'm transferring the pattern we have just created to the fabric and adding the necessary sewing allowance. For the center front piece, I have half an inch at the top, the side and the base, given that the center front is on fold. Why for the side front panel, I have half an inch everywhere is aside from the side because of the side seam, I'm using two, sorry, one inch seam allowance right there. So I also did the same thing for the back panels. Here is the pattern created from a previous video where I showed you how to make a mermaid skirt pattern and how to insert a high slit into it. So I'll link up that tutorial above, hopefully, but most importantly, it will be linked up in the description box. So this is the skirt pattern and I've just cut out that piece with the necessary allowance, one inch at the side and half an inch at the top, then the hemming allowance. So now here are the pieces I just cut out and I'm just showing you all the allowances right there. Again, remember to notch the bust point and the under bust point for the front pieces. I have also gone ahead to cut out fusible interfacing, which I have ironed in onto the main fabric and I cut out a piece of lining. The main fabric is a duchess fabric while the lining is a double face satin. I'll be starting the sewing process by sewing the center and the side pieces for the front together by half an inch. I'll, I also did the same thing for the lining and it's necessary to go press your seam allowances open and notch the necessary point. But I won't be notching on the lining because I intend to insert a boning into that allowance. So I just notch 
the underboss point so that I will know exactly where to stop the sewing and I'll turn my allowance this way and top stitch. The top stitching must be wide enough for you to pass a boning through it if you're using this method. So I have done the sewing right there, the top stitching, and this is what I have at the front. Now I'll be sewing the lining and the fabric together by half an inch along the neckline from one edge to the other. Remember we are not making use of a sleeve. So once that is done, I went ahead to notch and to top stitch on the lining and the allowance. Okay, so this is what I have right here. So now I'll set this aside so we can work on the back piece. So these two are the panels for the back. We have the center back and the side panel. I'll be sewing these two together by half an inch, attaching the main fabric to the main fabric of the other panel and then the lining. I'll do the same thing for the left and right side of the back pieces. So just like I did for the front, I've already ironed in my fusible interfacing at this point. So here I have the panels sewn together i've ironed out the seam allowance ironed open rather than the seam allowances so i'll be attaching the lining and the main fabric together like i did for the front sewing by half an inch and top stitching on the lining and the seam allowance so this is what you should have at the end of the day Now it's time to sew the side seams together. I will be sewing the front and back pieces together along the side seam allowance. Remember the side seam allowance is 1 inch so I'm just making use of that straightforward. You can go ahead to take measurements and do the regular way of joining. I like to work with my allowances. So I have 1 inch seam allowance here and I'll be sewing from the lining into the main fabric like so straight up. In such a way that the lining will be attached to the lining while the fabric is attached to the fabric so you can see what we have a continuous piece from one zip allowance onto the next at this point you should cross check all your measurements to be sure that your waistline and the bust line is accurate so you can then proceed to fixing the cup but before then i'll be attaching the boning onto the lining and i'll just pick up this plastic boning you can make use of a rigid boning as well so the boning should be the length between the waist and the under bust okay so for this piece is actually small so i'll go ahead to cut that length ensure that you leave out at least half an inch same allowance at the base of this piece because you don't intend to sew on your boning right so i picked up that boning right there and i taped the top and the base so that it just doesn't poke out of the dress so i also inserted it into that channel we created on the lining earlier on so right now i want to insert the cup so you can see the stiffness this is already given so insert it in a way that it moves inward around the tummy i hope you understand what i mean so right now pick up my cup my cup is exactly the size of the bust circumference of my client and knowing the exact size can be pretty dicey sometimes because they are not uniformly sized especially in our market here so i just place my cup right there make sure that the deepest part of the cup sits right into the bust point you know originally you notch the bust point right so you know exactly where to put your cup direct it in a way that it's convenient for you this is all creativity so once that is done you go and stitch along the line that way and then from the left to the right guys don't stitch on the main fabric please i just realized i was demonstrating on the main fabric it's supposed to be on the lining so once my cup was fixed this is what i have and you can see the seam inside the lining this way guys it doesn't make this look bad at all it's just okay especially because it's inside it's not visible on the outside so this right there is the inner structure for the front piece you can also attach boning to the back piece but i didn't do that for this outfit so right there i picked up my skirt and i went ahead to sew my dart both for the front and for the back and once that was done i i will be sewing the side seam one inch just like i did for the bodies i'll be sewing the one inch side seam for this skirt i will leave a little bit right there because i intend to work a little more there i'll close it up later once that is done i'll go ahead to sew the skirt and the bodies together by half an inch and i'm working 
only on the main fabric not on the lining so for this skirt i didn't use a lining at all because i wanted to retain the stretch and at the same time i just wanted it to flow freely i don't know i just like that for my mommy dresses At this point, I realized I forgot to include the drip on this piece. So I'll just go ahead to lose a little bit at the side right there because the drip will be at the side of this piece. So here is the fabric I cut out for the drip. It's just a yard wide and six inches long, including the seam allowance. And I've gone ahead to sew my to fold my seam allowance so that we have neat edges. So now I then went ahead to create random pleats on the drape. Okay, this pleat is random like you can see and I will be attaching it between the bodies and the skirt. So I've loosed out my seam right there to enable me to do this and I want the center of this drape to just be at the side seam. Okay. Once I got the positioning right, I went ahead and sew by half an inch. Now here is our dress so far. The next thing I'll be doing will be to fix the zip at the center back. So note that I'm only fixing the zip on the main fabric. I raised up the entire lining. So I'll be sewing the zip by the zip allowance which is one inch. And once I'm through, I'll go ahead to close up that zip with the lining. Now I have fixed the zip and this is what we have. Let me open it. Okay, so you can see how the zip is closed up with the lining right there. So I still have this opening here on the lining. What I'll be doing next will be to close up the waist seam. Okay, and I'm doing that from the inside. So I will turn this bodies around and sew my lining onto the main fabric along the waist by half an inch so this will leave us with a little opening it should be around six inches seven inches opening so i'll then go ahead to finish up that opening with a ladder stitch to give it a neat finishing For this open slit, I'll go ahead to measure the length of the slit, after which I will cut a piece of fabric just about 2 inches wide on bias that will act as a facing for that part, okay? Now here is the facing I cut out, I will be sewing this onto the skirt part by half an inch right side facing each other and once i'm done i'll overlock the edge and then use a hemming glue i was impressed a hemming glue needs to give it that finished look this is what i have on mine you can see how neat it looks Now I'll go ahead to hem the hemming allowance on the skirt and we are done. Guys, it's as simple as this. So I just went ahead to play around with this. This is not what I'll be using for this dress, but that was what I had available at this point of recording. So manage it like that. This is our dress on this dress mannequin. The mannequin is obviously much taller than the owner of the dress. But this is what it looks like. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the comment section. And you know, just binge watch on our other videos. Thank you once again. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.